from the beginning, there is this question of who is the we that is carrying things out? And what is the chain, the concatenation, one might say, the connection of beliefs that would make you decide, yes, this is something worth doing? There are two pieces of it. One is that you really have to believe that the climate threat is sufficiently grave that all avenues ought to be tried. And then the second is that you have to believe the particular boundaries that the scientists are laying down. So this question of, I mean, is it only a first step? And no, we don't really mean to do anything. Why would you be doing this if you didn't actually mean to be doing something? So I think people notice that there's a sort of commonsensical contradiction here. You wouldn't be doing this in the first place if you didn't have the intention to try it out at a different level. So maybe it'd be more honest to say not that, oh no, this is just, this has nothing to do with chemicals and it's just a prelim, it's got no bearing on what comes next and we're going to stop and assess, but instead to admit what it is, that this is a necessary first step and it's creating a preventive precautionary regime in and of itself. So I think that there are contradictions in the ways in which scientists themselves present their work. And people are very good at picking up contradictions, even if they don't understand mathematical probabilities. We need to look at what technology is in the first place and sort out that it has a material dimension that is we are bending the world to do our will in certain ways. But it also has a human and social dimension. I mean, so the going definition of technology is a tool that helps you accomplish things that you wish to accomplish. But that means the human and the social are in there from the start, because it's not, it's not the materiality that wishes to be put to a certain use, right? We humans come along and we say, this is how we want to use it. So purposes and stuff go hand in hand together.